Hi and welcome to my next um, free full length pan pastel and colour pencil tutorial. My name is Stephanie Seifer um, and today we will be drawing a toucan, exotic bird. Um, the paper that I'm using is the Canson Metientis um, pastel paper. Um, I will also be using uh, one or maybe slightly more um, Stabilo Carbothello pastel pencils. I'll be using the Pure Colour 20 Pan Pastel set and the um, Carandash Pablo colour pencils. But um, So if you don't have um, those specific colour pencils then just use another brand of pencils. Um, hopefully they will work quite well on this brand of paper. This is the smooth side of the Canson paper. Um, there is a honeycomb side on the other side but that is, you know, I'm not looking for a texture really um, for this piece. Um, yep, so if I can then you can, so let's draw a toucan. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with the head. I look at the um, position of the shapes in the drawing and um, try to break it up in my mind. Obviously, like the toucan has got an enormous beak, so that is something that stands out in the drawing. I just use a light pastel pencil. This one um, is 681. It's like a peach sort of colour, but I use the um, the light pastel pencils because you, it's it's not um, something. With pastel pencil, you don't really have to commit to it. You can you can just colour over it with something. So if you make a slight mistake, it doesn't matter. Okay. The reference reference photo is up in the corner there as well. If you're following along, you can just stop the video anytime you like. If you need to catch up or you want to just watch something again. He's actually got quite a jaggedy beak. I wouldn't mess with him. Really pretty blue eye, really pretty. So you can see there's some really clearly defined shapes there. This whole section is white. He's, he's a little bit furry, a little bit. There we go. Okay, I think that's going to be fine actually. So I think that means that we can actually already start on the pan pastels. Um, okay, so I'm just going to use um, a soft tool. Um, I might actually, I might actually use a sponge, you know, because it's such a large surface area. I might just use the sponge. The sponge, um, obviously, you can see they, they apparently they come in four different sizes, which is an interesting piece of information that I learned. Um, and they have um, it's the same as the soft tools as well. They, there's like a square one, a pointy one, an oblong one, and an oval one, I think. Um, and they come in four different sizes, and the sponges are the same as well. Right, so let's start 
laying down some color, shall we? Well, I could have started with the background there, but I've got overexcited and <laughs> started with the the subject, but it doesn't matter. As you can see, I've um, masking taped the um, paper to this board, which is good for moving it around if you, you know, work in more than one area. It's a very smooth paper actually, this um, Metian's paper. I might actually use um, a soft tool as well just to add some more layers. You can just take the applicator off the end of the soft tool there, apply more colour. This is completely different paper to pastel mat. I can tell instantly that I miss pastel mat. <laughs> but it's good to try something new. So I'm just getting the base layer in here. And there is a bit of shine on his feathers as well, so I'll probably just use a little bit of the white as well. Just to sort of lay out the sort of idea of where the, the sh uh, shine is on the shadow, uh, on, on the feathers. Looks more like fur to be honest. I have to say the um, black isn't as black as I would like it to be so what I will do is probably go over with some um, either coloured pencil or pastel pencil but first I'm going to carry on colouring the rest of, lay down some base colours for the rest and we can work on those afterwards. So I'm going to use some diolide yellow for the beak and try and work up a nice um, ombre kind of effect. Very therapeutic. And make sure that you've got enough um, pigment on your applicator because you will notice if you don't. But it will just start to drag across the page and it just will be unpleasant. Okay, and I'm going to swap over to Hansa Yellow. For... You can just mix on the pan, that's okay. If you're following along, please let me know. That would be fun. Let me know if you've followed along with any of the pastel tutorials I've done recently.
made me out my day earlier when the um, lovely people at the official uh, Pam Pastel colour Facebook page actually shared my foxglove tutorial. <laughs> no love me. Okay, and then we're back on this diolite yellow, which is like a really awesome neon orange yellow. But we can we can um, sort out doing the separation in the beak afterwards. Just concentrate on getting that um, nice um, that nice ombre effect. And then we'll probably use a bit of orange here, just plain old orange. And as you can see, you can it's like a cocktail, that isn't it? You can mix directly onto the paper. The difference I'm uh, here with the this Meetiens paper, it is actually considerably cheaper than pastel mat, um, but also um, it has two sides which you can use. Um, and also, I've noticed when I'm blowing away the dust, um, it doesn't stick to another part of the pad, which is what pastel mat tends to do, which can be really frustrating. So there's some plus points. And this actually comes in several different colours. In this pad, um, I think there was four different colours. The end of this hasn't been pushed on properly. It's like when you wear a sock and you're <laughs> it, it's, it's dangling over your toes. There we go. Really have to worry if you go like too much over the lines or anything like that because we can um we're doing the background so things can be tidied up at a later date it's drawing those sorts of almost like zebra kind of marks and this is an excellent tool actually for replicating that excellent Right, and while we've got this orange out, I might as well just do a little bit more around the eye there. And just whack on a bit more yellow. And we need um, a bit of red for the top. This is permanent red. These are all from the 20 Pure Colour set, which is a really good set. So if you want to um, get a, a really decent first set, I would get that one. That's the one I got. And if you shop around, you can get some bargains. So I'm just going to go back on with the black here and um, colour in the end of the beak here. I might actually use a one of these eyeshadow type applicators. Pan pastel are an excellent way to cover a vast expanse of space in little to no time. Which when you compare to colour pencil art is hugely more convenient. But yeah, you sort of get best of both worlds if you use pan pastel with coloured pencil, which is what I like to do. Because they work together so well.
just add a few more layers over here as well. But always go in the direction of the fur or the feathers or whatever it is, you know, your animal that you're drawing. And these eyeshadow style applicators are very good for small details. What I will do actually is this tiny bit here when I've gone over, but the beauty of pan pastel is, as you can see, it just rubs away. Um, this is a um, Pentel click eraser, if anyone was interested in that. I would recommend getting two types of erasers, or three types actually. Get a um, kneaded eraser, um, one of those squishy ones, which you can also use as stress relief. Um, if anything like a pandemic happens um, and then also a click, a click eraser and also the Tombow Mono Zero eraser uh, which is for fine details which you'll also find useful. As you can see it's sort of taking the extra layers pretty nicely there. Okay, and we'll use the eyeshadow applicator to just colour in this section of his beak there as well. It almost looks like plastic. It's so shiny and smooth. And we can add the shine afterwards with some pencil okay right so I'm just also going to um, use another a different eyeshadow applicator to kind of blend in this orange shade was the um, Hansi yellow and also a little bit of white. You do need to think about colouring in this section too. Once again, we can go over with a creamy white pencil and add some details.
Maybe a tiny bit of yellow ochre. Okay, right, so um, for the eye, I'm going to use a Stabilo Carbothello. Um, this is uh, 425, just because it's just so much more straightforward to get a bit of um, really small detail with a pastel pencil. Um, but you can just use coloured pencils. You don't have to use expensive coloured pencils, you can just use um, normal coloured pencils, you know, normal priced ones. Don't feel obliged to spend too much on anything fancy. While we've got the black pencil out, I might actually just define some of these lines as well. This is with the black Carbothello pastel pencil. If you haven't got any pastel pencils yet, you can just get away with uh, ordering a small set because you don't really have to use them. But if you, you know, are a pencil hoarder like me, then you'll probably end up wanting some anyway. I'm a terrible pencil hoarder. <laughs> and Carbothel does go over the um, pan pastel a little bit, but not not as well as I would have liked. Right, okay, we'll just do over on this beak as well. Just round the edges, just to tidy it up. Maybe a little tiny bit here. Okay. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do now, uh, before I move on to any further detail on the bird, is actually do the background. Because um, that would stop anything from potentially bleeding into the subject. Um, so I'm going to use this yellow ochre. Um, this sponge is pretty clean, um, but it's just so pigmented. The pan muscles are just so pigmented that um, it it you just never it'll never come out. So, so you just use a dabbing motion. The good thing with the blurry background is you don't really have to worry about anything too detailed. This is kind of a greyish brown blurry background. Lot of dust, lot of dust. Reminds me of Chevy Chase, <laughs> Marshall Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. A lot of sap, a lot of sap. <laughs> I 
look, I mean, look how fast, look how fast. We're just using the white and the yellow ochre, just filling that in. The meaty ends, it's paper, I think that's how you say it. Um, it, it takes the pastel pretty well, to be honest. Tiny, tiny bit of black there. You can add a little bit more shading, maybe with a few pastel pencils afterwards. a little tiny bit greeny over here which I will use the chromium oxide green oh can you hear my cat meowing <laughs> she thinks she lost me <laughs> and then she she meows until she finds me and then she just goes to sleep Put a note in the comments if your cat does the same thing. <laughs> I'm in here drawing a toucan. <laughs> Just keep reapplying the pigment to the sponge. As I said, we can um, go over with some pastel pencils and maybe even some colour pencils at the end in a similar vein to how I did with the foxglove drawing at the end there, um, just to pull out some highlights. Bit of light, bit of dark, you know. You know the drill. I also like to squeeze the the sponge. Squeeze it to get a different effect. It comes out quite nicely. have to start using a different white plum pastel soon but luckily I bought the portrait set recently so um, I've got one in there let me know in the comments which pan pastel set you bought first or which one you are planning to buy the plan is one day to get all of the colors but at the moment I am very happy with the ones I've got so I am planning on doing a portrait at some point. It's very exciting. I see how I've accidentally pulled a little bit of black there. That's nothing to worry about if you do the same thing. Do not worry about that because we can just go over it. Now, I wouldn't mind actually finding um, like an umber, so I'm just going to look for one. Okay, we've got an umber. So I'm just going to use a little bit of umber just to darken up these sorts of areas around here it's 
quite a, a relaxing therapeutic medium to use to be honest because it's kind of like when you're a kid and you're just yeah, I'll put this paint wherever I like it's very relaxing and therapeutic it gives you that kind of freedom you know that feeling of liberty to just cover a surface with with color and be pleased with the end result as you can see that color has worked well I also when I um, I squeezed the sponge to add the color and then to sort of smooth it out a bit I just make it go completely flat again and then dab it over again it's back on the white a little bit just to get around the edge of this beak I'm just going to use another soft tool, a clean, completely clean one, just to smooth in this background. Just smooth in all the way around. There it is. I'm wondering where that has gone then. And we'll just add some colour or a bit more detail with the soft tool. Hope you're enjoying this tutorial. If you are, let me know. <laughs> Feedback is always welcome. Whatever you feel, you know, if you uh, have a suggestion for what you'd like to see or if there's something you'd like me to include in the tutorial. Uh, I'd like just to use a little bit of this style like this one just to sort of pull out these kinds of yellowy tones in the background there. I don't want to spend too much time on the background, really. Okay, and I'll just dab this to kind of blur it out again. Okay, so now I think I'm going to move on to the subject, which is the toucan, obviously. Um, so I'm just going to use a black Caran Pablo just to go around the edges. Add some nice light strokes and turn the pencil as you go because that keeps the pencil sharp. You don't have to add um, like a visible line all the way down, but every so often make sure there's like a flick out so it's like feathers. And then we'll just go on the inside section here. Don't forget to turn the pencil.
think I am going to use the Faber Castell Polychromo actually because that's just it's a much blacker black and it, the details are just easier to achieve with it so if you're buying colour pencils definitely get one of those okay and we filled out the um, the whole area in this colour but and I've left because I left a bit of shape uh, like sort of um, light with the um, grey tone over the top um, just emulate the feathers by drawing fine lines over the the lighter parts We just tidy up this section here. Like I said before, you make it look really shiny. And the Faber Castell Polychromo stays sharp the longest. So it's a good pencil to have in your pencil arsenal. Um, and I will start. I will use a little bit of this. This is a Cavendish Pablo White, which is a wax based pencil, but you can use both. I'll just go over the bottom section. On this paper, actually, with the pans, the um, polychromo pencil actually looks so shiny when you lay it down, which doesn't happen on pastel mat, which is interesting. And I'll just go around this eye here, as soon as we have the black pencil out. Okay, I'll add a little bit more shine from the white there. We'll get a blue as well. This is the Cavendish Pablo in Cobalt Blue. And then slight extra details there which might not pick up on camera but you can see them yourself just gonna use a Prismacolor black actually just to get see if I can get a bit more depth back on the polychroma just for this edge here give that sort of realistic effect into the from the dark area to the lighter area but then yeah this wax based prismacolor is actually not not as shiny which we can just shade in In, in emphasize those shadows as you notice I rest on a piece of tissue or sometimes a piece of glassine um, 
just to stop my hand getting covered in pastel because then if I was to lean on the black there and that was black on my hand which there is a little bit I leaned on the beak then it would just transfer and we don't want that Okay, and then just add a bit more shine in the feathers with the white pencil. Just use any wax pencil that's white or oil based, it doesn't matter. If it takes well on the paper, it does help to have a mix of um, brands of pencil just in case one paper doesn't really take it as well. That's something I learned from getting different types of pencils is that it's always handy to have a, a range. Okay, I'm just going to go over with the white pencil here just to add ooh, a little bit of definition here. Just round the eye. And we do need a, a lighter yellow, so we'll use this Pablo in pale yellow. Let's add a few more feathers. Let me know if there's any kind of tutorial or subject in the tutorial. Beginners, pen pastel, colour pencil, yeah, tutorial. <laughs> can't can't say all the words at once, Steph. Um, you'd like me to do? Um, yeah. So I'm always open to suggestions. I'm trying to vary it up with the subject matter, you know. So. Let me know, drop me a line. My Facebook page and Instagram um, links are in the description below, unless you're obviously watching this on Facebook, then hello. <laughs> I just colour in this white section here. In the direction of the fur feathers fur so add a little bit of cream to this this is more of a yellow isn't it but right okay so I think we're gonna move on to the beak a bit more now um, just a tiny go over this with this, uh, this is just lemon yellow. So like I said, just pick a similar colour. This set that I'm using, the Pablo's, is a uh, 30 set, so it's not a huge set. I might use a tiny bit of um, this orange, which is just called orange. Just to give a bit more 
definition to the eye section. Very nice. Okay, so we'll move back onto the beak just to tidy up the beak. Now we do need to um, use a slightly darker colour here just to, um, let me just sharpen this, just to um, separate the top section from the bottom section. So I'm just using a darker orange here which is reddish orange. Okay, and then just carry on colouring underneath. And keep swapping in between the pencils. Just blend them on the paper. What I will do actually is um, go over these lovely kind of zebra type markings. Just to find those a little bit. Just use light pressure sort of circle motions for the shading. I kind of go in an up and down, up and down, up and down, and then I go around the edge there. And it gets the same effect, as you can see. He has got a handsome beak, don't you think? We'll start using a little bit of red, so this is scarlet. Just to fill in that colour, darker shade of colour underneath. And there are also the underside of the marks underneath as well. Using the yellow line to define the beak a bit more there, where the two parts separate. We'll just use a little bit of scarlet at the bottom here. Orange. It's just a case of constantly swapping and mixing the pencils as and when you see that colour change into the next. Let's go over the top section here. Scarlet back out. And the light is hitting it around here, so that is why it's got more white. So we'll just put, put a bit of white there. Get those white pencils out, guys. Make sure they're nice and clean. Sometimes pigment can stick to the pencil and um, contaminate the colour you're trying to achieve. Lay down there. Go 
had a bit of shine on the beak here. He has also got some sort of marks here. I don't know it's where he's been eating. He's had a little snack before we had his photo taken. Go over this section again. Just go over underneath here as well. What I will do is get a coloured pencil, which is this is a prism colour actually in beige, and just colour in around the edges of the beak, which is much nearer to the bird. And also we will start to add a few highlights to the background. This is a uh, Pablo in light ochre. Just to add some definition to the background. And because the background is blurry, it can just be swirliness. Swirliness. Still just going over the background, circular motions, light pressure, just to kind of emulate that blurred effect. a little bit of burnt sienna
once again you can just go over one colour with another on the paper, that's fine. I just think we just need to blur this little section out a bit more, make it a bit more soft. If you ever go over too harshly you can always just take it up a bit with a bit of erasing and then just go over with a lighter colour if required. A bit more shadow, uh, sorry, shine to his eye. He is a handsome fellow, isn't he? There we go. A little bit more shine. A tiny bit more black to the end of the beak there. You don't have to draw every single feather. These tutorials are here to help beginners get confidence and just learn about using this particular medium. Um, pen pastels are a fantastic medium and I would highly recommend them to anyone, no matter what your art school level is. They are really, really a rewarding medium. And a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm going to actually go over the background a bit more using the soft tool and um, some more pom pastel just to add some more depth of tone. Which is important in making it have that sort of pop a blurry effect. Just using the uh, yellow ochre and the raw umber interesting fact about pan pastels, they have a light fastness rating on the back, which is always useful to know. Using a bit of neutral grey as well. Make sure that you pick up enough pigment on the soft tool and then just circle motions.
my cat is come to see me. <laughs> you hear her? can mix on this sort of paper like I like to do with pastel mat but it doesn't it doesn't grip as well it doesn't have that kind of it's not like thirsty paper like pastel mat it has more of a it sort of stays on the surface more if you're thinking about trying this paper I don't know how often I will end up using this paper, to be honest. But we'll see. You see how similar it is to painting. <laughs> Okay, I think that'll pretty much do for the background and then I think I'll just go over the edges with the black pencil and the white just to tidy up those edges. 
can add sort of burgundy, uh, not burgundies, um, like violets and things to um, make the black fur have a much more rich tone, which is a trick that some artists like to use. I'm just using this uh, Dermot Light Fast here just to add some richer tones over the black base. Gives a nice effect. A little bit of shadow above the eye there. Okay, I think that we're pretty much done. But yeah, you can um, continue to add different tones. So that with the the white pencil or the black pencil, or, you know, or the purple pencil, um, as you go along. Um, but yeah, I think he's a pretty handsome bird, don't you? <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you again for watching and tuning in. Um, feel free to have a look at my other tutorials. I have got some other free ones there and I'll be making some more as we go along. Um, if you liked the video, um, let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye.